All right, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the muscles of the anterior thorax. We're going to talk about uh, each one of those muscles in each of these three models so that we can get a kind of a different variation and look at the different muscle fibers and look at the superficial and the deep layers. Um, also, what I want to be able to do in these videos is talk about synergists and antagonists. So um, before we do that, what I wanted to be able to do is give us the defining terms of what a synergist is and what an antagonist is. So a synergist is like, let's say you have two muscles, they both perform the same action. Okay, so if they both perform the same action, those are synergists to one another. Okay, so they work together to be able to perform that function. Antagonists are going to be two muscles that oppose each other. So for example, let's say that the biceps brachii, we'll talk about it, it flexes the forearm. The triceps brachii is going to oppose that and extend the forearm. So we're going to talk about a lot of these guys in this video. All right, guys, so if we look here, you see this big muscle, number 58 right here, this huge muscle right here. This muscle is called the pectoralis major. So this is called the pectoralis major. The pectoralis major has uh, three primary functions, those being it flexes the whole arm right at the shoulder joint. It also adducts the whole arm at the shoulder joint, meaning it pulls the arms in, all right? And it also helps to be able to immediately rotate the arm or internal rotation at the shoulder joint. So those are the three functions of the pectoralis major. So a synergist to the pectoralis major could be someone else who flexes the forearm. That could be like the coracobrachialis. Um, you also could find another guy who does uh, adduction at the forearm, and that could be the coracobrachialis or the latissimus dorsi or the teres major. And then we could, he also does medial rotation, right? So someone who else does medial rotation could be like the subscapularis, the latissimus dorsi, the teres major tons of those different muscles, right? So that could be an example, whereas if you want an antagonist to any of those, for example, he flexes the whole arm at the shoulder, someone that would extend the whole arm at the shoulder, like the teres major or the latissimus dorsi. Uh, he adducts at the shoulder, so he'd want to be able to have a muscle uh, antagonizing him who would abduct at the shoulder, and that would be like the deltoid muscle or the supraspinatus. And then again, he immediately rotates, so you'd want someone who laterally rotates, like the infraspinatus or the teres minor. Okay, so those are some muscles right there for that. That's just giving you just a quick preview of the pectoralis major and some of its synergists and antagonists. So if we come over here, uh, you see these two muscles here, 63 and 62. 62 is the external intercostal. So this is the external intercostal, and there's another piece of it, another piece, right? 63 is the internal intercostals. So this is the internal intercostals right there also. The external intercostals help to elevate the ribs. So they pull the ribs up. So they provide elevation of the ribs for inhalation. So, so you can take in deeper breaths, right? Uh, the internal intercostals, they depress the ribs. They pull those ribs down for like a forced exhalation. So if you think about it, these two are antagonists to one another for that function. He elevates the ribs and he depresses the ribs. That being elevating is going to be the external intercostals, depressing is the internal intercostals. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit another muscle over here. And if you can see it over here, this is going to be called the serratus anterior. All these guys right here are the serratus anterior. And the serratus anterior muscle, it's responsible for being able to protract the scapula. So that's going to be protraction of the scapula. Someone who else who could protract the scapula could be like the pectoralis minor. And someone who retracts the scapula, you have a ton of muscles that could do that. We could say the rhomboids major or minor. Um, we could say the trapezius muscle could also do that. So those could be some type of antagonist to the serratus anterior. Now, if we come over here, if we look here, we're going to be able to see another view of some of these skeletal muscles we talked about. So, on this one, you can see the pectoralis major right here that I'm scraping, number 30, uh, 39. It, you can see the pectoral fascia, though, of the, the platysma muscle kind of sitting over it. But this is the, the pectoralis major, and we already talked about what its functions are. Um, flexion, at the, uh, flexion at the shoulder, adduction at the shoulder, and medial rotation at the shoulder. But it's also a very superficial muscle. And so if I take off this layer here, we can see some of the deeper layers of the pectoralis major. So if we look underneath the pectoralis major, you can see this muscle right here. This muscle is called the pectoralis minor. 
So the pectoralis minor, what it does, it helps to be able to protract the scapula. So its insertion point is the coracoid process of the scapula, and the origin is going to be ribs two through five. So what it does, it pulls, again, it pulls the scapula forward, right? So that's going to be the pectoralis minor. Um, and again, it would be a synergist to the serratus anterior that we talked about, who also protracts the scapula. If you look here, 42 and 43, 42 and 43, 42 being the external intercostals and 43 being the internal intercostals. We know that the external intercostals elevate the ribs, right? And then 43, the internal intercostals depress the ribs. So they're going to be antagonists to one another. Another muscle that you can see here, I'm going to pull this out here, it's actually going to be this muscle right underneath the clavicle right there. It's called the subclavius, and the subclavius depresses the clavicle. So there's another muscle that you can see in this model. All right, so that covers the muscles that I wanted to show you in this model. We're going to move on to one more model so that we can take another look at some of them. All right, guys, so if we look here, we can see another view of some of those muscles we talked about. So if you look here, this muscle right here, this is the pectoralis minor. We already talked about him. And again, we know that he protracts the scapula. Okay, so he'd be a synergist to the, specifically the serratus anterior, but he would be an antagonist to like, for example, the trapezius or the rhomboids major minor. And then we talked about these guys, external intercostals right here, internal intercostals right there. These two are antagonists to one another because the external intercostals elevate the ribs. Internal intercostals depress the ribs, right? And then over here, we can see the serratus anterior, but we have an even better view of them over here. We can see the serratus anterior right there. And that's a nice view of them. And we know that the serratus anterior is designed to be able to protract the scapula. And so like we said, it would be a synergist to the pectoralis minor, but an antagonist to, uh, as we said, the um, rhomboids major minor or the trapezius. So if we take a look here, we're going to see one more view of the pectoralis major right here. Again, this is the pectoralis major right there. And again, as we already said, flexes the whole arm at the shoulder joint, adducts the shoulder joint, adducts at the shoulder joint, and it also does medial rotation. Okay, so again, it could be a synergist to the coracobrachialis for flexion at the shoulder and adduction at the shoulder. It could be a synergist to the subscapularis for medial rotation. It could be an antagonist to the infraspinatus and the teres minor for lateral rotation. It could be antagonist to the teres uh, major and the latissimus dorsi for uh, they extend at the shoulder and he flexes at the shoulder. So he could have a ton of different synergists and antagonists. It just depends upon what action, okay? All right, guys, so that basically gives us everything that we need to know about some of these anterior muscles of the uh, thorax. All right, so we're going to take a look at the abdominal wall muscles now. So if we look here, I'm going to go through each one of these abdominal wall muscles from superficial to deep. So from the most top layer, or the superficial layer, all the way down to the deepest inner layer, okay? So the first one, the most superficial layer of the abdominal wall is right here. This guy looks like it's going down the pants. The fibers look like it's going down the pants. This is the external oblique, okay? So the external oblique what it does is it helps to be able to flex the vertebral column and it compresses the contents of the abdomen to increase the intra-abdominal pressure to assist in exhalation, okay, forced exhalation though. Then if we come over here, I'm going to turn it for you guys. You can see over here, we got the internal oblique. And the internal oblique, if you look at the fibers, it looks like it's going up your shirt or it's going up towards that right shoulder. So the internal oblique is going to be the second superficial layer. So it goes external oblique, then underneath that is going to be the internal oblique. And the internal oblique does the same thing. It flexes the vertebral column and it compresses the contents of the abdomen to increase the intra-abdominal pressure to assist in forced exhalation. Then if we look at this next muscle layer right here, which appears like it's going straight up and down, this is the rectus abdominis. So this is your six pack muscles, right? So this is the next deepest layer. So it goes external oblique, internal oblique, and then it goes rectus abdominis. And the rectus abdominis is going to, again, flex the vertebral column and compress the contents of the abdomen to increase intra-abdominal pressure to assist in exhalation, forced exhalation. There is another muscle that you can't see 
it's even deeper than this one. It's called the transversus abdominis. And it does not flex the vertebral column. All it does is compress the contents of the abdomen to increase the intra-abdominal pressure to assist in forced exhalation. But I'm gonna show you guys that muscle on another muscular model. And we have another, last thing, we have this other connective tissue aponeurosis running right down this, which is called the linea alba. And that's a good connective tissue structure. Some of the muscles actually insert onto that. All right, guys, like as promised, I told you I would show you guys the transversus abdominis right here. So if you see, what we did was we just took the chest plate of this uh, model off of uh, one of the torsos so that you could see it. So if you look here, this muscle, which appears like it's going side to side, this right here is the transversus abdominis, and that's the deepest layer of the abdomen. Okay, and so again, just remember that this one does not flex the vertebral column. All it does is compress the contents of the abdomen to increase intra-abdominal pressure to assist in forced exhalation. But as you can see, you can still see the rectus abdominis here, and you can even see the external oblique over here too. Okay, so again, that gives us basically the view of the muscles that we're gonna need to know, okay, on this 12 chest plate. All right, so now we're gonna do a quick recap of the abdominal wall muscles, but we're just gonna look at it on another model so that we can get a different view of those muscles, what they look like, their functions again, and then there happens to just be another muscle on this model that I wanna also wanna show you guys. So again, we're gonna go from superficial all the way to deep, and it's just gonna be more of a quick recap again, guys. So this muscle right here looks like, again, it's going down the pants, this, this is actually going to be the external oblique. And again, flexes the vertebral column and compresses the contents of the abdomen to assist in forced exhalation. All right guys, so now we're gonna come over here and we're gonna take a look at the internal oblique. The internal oblique, if you remember, it looks like the fibers are going up the shirt or towards like your shoulder, your right shoulder here. So that's going to be the internal oblique. And the internal oblique, again, flexes the vertebral column and compresses the contents of the abdomen to increase the intra-abdominal pressure to assist in forced, forced in exhalation. Next one, rectus abdominis. Appears like it's going up and down, right? So this is your six pack muscles. It flexes the vertebral column and it compresses the contents of the abdomen to increase intra-abdominal pressure, which helps to assist in forced exhalation, all right? Um, again, you can't see the transversus abdominis. It would be the deepest layer and it still does, and it actually moves from left to right, side to side, right? It does not flex the vertebral column. It only compresses the contents of the abdomen to increase intra-abdominal pressure to help to uh, assist in forced exhalation, okay? So again, that gives us his muscles from superficial to deep. Again, external oblique, internal oblique, rectus abdominis, transversus abdominis. Again, this connective tissue aponeurosis here is the linea alba right there. And there is a muscle right down here and it's called the pyramidalis. And it actually inserts on the linea alba and helps to tense the linea alba, okay? 